going to be reviewing Silkwood by Mike Nichols. Well, he directed it. Um, I'll start off with what I thought of the movie. I really did like it. I think that Meryl Streep did a good job playing Karen, and I thought that Cher did a good job too. Um, there was a few points in the movie where, actually, basically the whole movie, I didn't really like Karen. I know she was trying to do good for like her, the co-workers and stuff, but you kind of just get a sense of like that she's a liar and you can't really believe her. And I think maybe that came from what I read previously because I did some research on it before just to see because I had to know how historically accurate it was going to be. And a lot of those said that she wasn't a very trustworthy person, she didn't really care about her kids very much. So I think going in, I probably didn't like her that much, so I don't know if that's why I didn't like her, but I just, she wasn't my favorite. Like, I liked the movie, but she just, yeah, I wasn't a fan. But um, for my historical background, I have it all in little note cards here. Um, so the first one was that her and her boyfriend Drew in their house that, so it was her, those two, and then Cher was also in there, and they were all shared the room, the house. And in their room, they had a Confederate flag behind their headboard for their, for their bed. And I just thought that was kind of weird because it was in Oklahoma. And Oklahoma wasn't even a part of the United States. It wasn't even a state. It was still Indian Territory during the Civil War. So that was just kind of like, I, I get what they were trying to do, but I don't really like it because it wasn't, it doesn't make sense. And then... Another point was that I read in a lot of the articles that her first time on a plane was when she was going from Oklahoma to D.C. to talk with the Union and kind of tell them what was going on and how she was going to, how they weren't following all these safety procedures. And it was her first time on the plane and they, I thought she did a very good job portraying that in the movie. She, when they like came around and handed her the food and like the little peanuts and stuff, she asked the waitress, she was like, oh, do I have to pay for this? And the waitress just gave her kind of a funny look. And that just really made sense because she would, she didn't know because she'd never been on a plane before. So I thought she did really good doing that. And it was very historic, historically accurate. And then all, so basically all of what happened in the movie, how many times she got scrubbed down because she had the plutonium poisoning how she told this other co-worker, Velma, who had the poisoning, they asked her if she did a nose smear, and that was kind of when the first time she was like, oh, we aren't following the rules and regulations here. Well, all of those things really played out in the movie exactly how it was in all the articles I read about it and stuff, and one of the main ones was she, the second time she had very high levels of poisoning in her or contamination, and she was very hot, that's what they called it when they were, when they had a lot of it in their system. Well, she, and then they have to come to your house and like check and test your walls and everything in your house basically to see how hot your house was also. So when, when they came to her house, it was, there was so much plutonium poisoning in it. There was, it was all over and they said it was way higher than what it was supposed to be. And she came up and said that the urine sample spilled and it did say that in all of the articles, but then again, we can't really be sure just because she wasn't the one who said it. It's these other people saying, oh yeah, this is what happened. So you can't be positive that that's even what happened back then, but as far as all the articles for like the research and stuff that said it, it also played out in the movie like that. And then, and, another, and this kind of goes along with why I didn't like her in the beginning, how she wasn't very trustworthy and she was kind of, she was lying and contaminating herself is that's what people say and I do believe it but she was doing that so then Kermagee would have even more be in more trouble for having her and her house be that contaminated with plutonium but then Hurley her manager at Kermagee when they were cleaning out her house he came over to her and was like he just kind of doubted her and was like I know what you're doing kind of saying that what did she want did she want money or a house or something to live in that was different what did she want from them because there was no way her house could be that contaminated and I didn't like her in the movie either just because she wasn't even working in the plutonium rod place where she was when people would get contaminated she was up in the metallography which you didn't even have to touch the plutonium you just looked at pictures of it so it it didn't really work out, but that's how it was in real life after she got contaminated twice. They sent her to the metallography center so she wouldn't be contaminated anymore and be such a liability to them. 
And then the last question, which is kind of the whole mystery of her case, was if she was really murdered or not. Um, I kind of do believe that she was murdered, and it didn't really show. It only showed a car coming up behind her and then her car being in the ditch. So it didn't show that she was murdered, that it was them who ran her off the road. But in all of the articles I read and like the historical context things that I read, she, um, a lot of people say that she could have been. And one of the main things that they said was that she had a manila envelope that held all of the stuff, all of the evidence for why Kermagee was breaking all those rules and regulations. And then when she went missing, the manila envelope was also missing and she was on her way to a meeting to meet with the union and talk to them to make Kermagee know that like what they're doing is wrong and that they're going to challenge them and try to get it what's going right. So I think before she could go to that meeting, someone probably ran her off the road or something and got her in what looked like a one car accident and then just drove away. And then in the movie, they showed headlights coming up behind her and she kind of looked into the, uh, the rear view mirror and it was kind of like she knew what was going on. She kind of kept looking at them and the way they portrayed that in the movie and a lot of the critics say that it's still a mystery, but to me, I don't know, maybe if just because I believe that she was murdered and that it probably was them who ran her off the road and then she got in an accident that looked like it was only one car, maybe I just believe that she was murdered. So I can look at the movie and say, oh yeah, it definitely looks like she was, she knew who it was, but she kept just like looking into the rear view mirror and saying, not saying anything, but just the way she looked, it was like she knew that it was them and something bad was about to happen. And then also because the metal envelope was missing, which had everything in it that, that was for her case. And then for one of the quotes that kind of goes along with the whole entire movie, um, it's from Richard Schickel from Time Magazine, and it's all about Silkwood. It says, there is none of the affectionate respect for working class life and values that mark the similar and far superior Norma Ray, nor any of that film self sense of felt reality either. And I saw this a lot throughout the movie, and I looked up what Norma Ray was because I never heard of that. And basically, it's the same thing. They She works in a factory or on a farm or a field or something, and there's kind of bad regulations there. No one gets really treated how they should, and there's a lot of things that go wrong in the plant. Or not the plant, the field. And so she gets her co-workers, and they go on a strike, and they try with the union to get their working quality better but I agree with what he says about how Silkwood there isn't you don't feel affectionate towards the working class like there's no really I think maybe because there isn't a good person to lead them just because I didn't like Karen that I don't really want them to succeed and I know that I should want people to have better working conditions and stuff but just the way she went about it and how she lied about it is what people say and how they portrayed it in the movie. I just, I couldn't like her and what she was trying to do. But so yeah, I thought that was just a really good quote saying that compared to other movies, you don't feel that sense of, oh yes, I love her. I want them to do so good. You just kind of, you don't really want them to succeed. But yeah, that's all.